So what I'm going to do is ask you all, ask the men and ask the women to, to, to do two different things. Okay. I want the women to clap and I want the men to chant, just to say uh, something. Okay, have you got that? Is that clear? Women will clap, men will chant. Femi's going to play something. I don't know what he's going to play. It's all random. And I want the women to improvise on this theme or this song and just clap along. And I want the men just to say, ah. Men, can you do that? Oh, man. Fantastic. <laughs> Amazing. C, C sharp. Really good. Okay. So, women first. Round of applause. That's really good. So what you actually did there is something that organisations are struggling to do. That's get people that haven't worked before to collaborate and improvise on a theme. And the theme could be we've got a new product or a new service that we want to roll out or launch. And get them to be creative and innovative with that theme. So that's why that exercise was done. Okay. Um, a bit about what we're going to cover. Do you want me to stay here? Or shall I stay here? You can stay there if you want, yeah. Or we can go and have a cup of tea. Or <laughs> whatever you fancy. Okay. It doesn't seem to be moving. But I have pressed it. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. Of course it is. Right, so introduction. I'll just introduce myself. And then we'll look at what jazz improvisation is as a metaphor. Because it's really just a set of principles that can be applied. You don't need to like jazz music. You don't need to like uh, even no music theory. Um, but then we're going to talk about why it's useful for business and industry. And uh, look at a few examples of that. And uh, <coughs> then I'm going to talk about these workshops that I've got planned for young people. So a bit about me, I took a master's degree at Birkbeck College, University College London in Arts Policy and Management. I've worked within the uh, IT world for about 13 years now as a senior consultant and project manager. So very used to working with small teams um, for new product releases and so on and so forth. Um, my thesis was shortlisted by Lancaster University for a PhD program, but I decided not to do it. And um, I've been the director of Jazz Alive for seven years, and, and we basically train aspiring young jazz musicians. So that's a bit about me uh, to start off. But this talk is about um, my idea of using big business, ideas sorry, from big business and jazz improvisation uh, to deliver business startup workshops for young people. Now, this is something that hasn't been done before. It's very, very common in industry. Um, MIT do it, Harvard do it, a lot of creative industries modules and uh, courses uh, all over the place do it. But it's never been applied with young people, so it's quite, quite new uh, and different. So, first of all, let's just be clear on what improvisation is. Um, so it comes from the Latin word improvisus, and it means 
you not seen ahead of time or unforeseen. So it's something you can't see. Um, musically, it's often when a musician doesn't have a written score or written piece of music and they're composing on the spur of the moment. Um, the metaphor is, is useful because it's really about how anybody within business, let's say, can have an idea for design um, and try and get some unanticipated ideas shaped um, within a special condition of performance. Now, the performance in the business context could be um, a business event, a collaborative design meeting or workshop or something like that. And it's applying improvisation uh, to business as a tool to create um, and innovate some new ideas. So that's really what we're trying to do here. Um, so again, this, can, this metaphor can be applied to, to business and to other contexts as well. So where did these ideas come from? There was a, uh, the key ideas were published in that journal, the Organization Science Journal. There was a conference in 95, which was um, before this, and a lot of the ideas came out of that. Um, and one of the key speakers there was Frank Barrett, and he defined the characteristics of jazz improvisation. So I've just listed them there. Um, and I've just highlighted a few. If we look at them top down, we've got uh, interrupt habit patterns. So it's very important not to do the same thing the same way, but to deliberately interrupt and be disruptive with what you're doing. Um, and embracing errors, that's another big thing within uh, improvisation and the characteristics. And another thing is retrospective sense-making. So not be tied up with the structure and the process when... Uh, 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 something's happening, but just going with the flow, if you like. So the metaphor, um, here's some characteristics of groups with a high capability for improvisation. So here's a picture of some guys or some teams there improvising. Um, and here's some of the characteristics of them. So you can see at the bottom there, preference for and comfort with process rather than structure. And that's what I sort of said, that... Um, not being tied up with the structure, but going with the process and seeing what the outcome can be. And also the top one, um, a willingness to forego planning and rehearsing in favour of re reacting or acting in the real time. So very often, um, I heard that it takes two to three months for uh, the product life cycle for a mobile phone um, to be designed. So all the way from actually designing it to manufacturing it to rolling it out. So given that short cycle, product life cycle, there isn't much time for uh, a lot of planning and blueprinting. You've got to be able to work in real time. So these are the characteristics of groups that are capable of improvisation. Um, next, I just wanted to separate the ideas of improvisation and creativity and innovation. Very often they're conflated and people think they mean the same thing. So I've just tried to um, separate them here. Um, and one of the ideas is that innovation is different to improvisation. It's actually successfully implementing creative ideas within an organisation. So it's actually implementing the idea that creates the innovation. Um, and the improvisation is something you do before that to get the idea. Um, so that's often the relationship between the two. But I actually think it's, uh, or suggest that it's possible to do both to be creative and innovative um, while you're improvising and to get the output uh, as well. So that's something, I guess, to think about. Okay, so we've covered off what improvisation is. Let's look at why it's useful for business and industry. So right at the top there, we've, we've had one, two, three, four sorts of um, areas of crisis within organisation uh, management and leadership theory or management theory. They post-industrial society, the third wave, um, information revolution, and the post-capitalist society. And these are all really key ideas um, about the information age. Let's call it that. And uh, the post-capitalist capitalist society, which is Drucker's work, is talking about moving from a society that's based on capital, land, and labor to a society whose primary source is knowledge and whose key structure is the organization. 
So that's, that's where we are now, I, su I suggest, in a post-capitalist society. And that brings its problems, because um, a postmodern sort of business organization has to contend with shorter product cycles and innovative solutions. The problem is, if you use the classic Weberian structure, so this is obviously Max Weber, the German sociologist, who sort of suggested that efficiency comes from a hierarchical structure, a very bureaucratic approach, uh, which of course works in some industries, like banks, works extremely well in banks, uh, but may not work that well in more innovative uh, startups, let's say. And the problem with that is, is it's too bureaucratic and hierarchical, and uh, it relies on very clearly delineated lines of authority and all the actions taken are based on written rules and of course you can probably instantly see that you can't respond quickly to change in that sort of organisation structure and it can stifle individual and organisational creativity and innovation so what's emerged is the idea that we can use the jazz band as a metaphor and as a prototype for an organisation for the 21st century, and quite a lot has been written about this, I've just referred to Wyke's quote where he says, ambiguity and high turbulence um, is what many managers experience, and anyone that's worked in industry will know this, that it is very challenging. Um, so you need a different model, a different way of organising to, to accommodate that. Um, improvisation is more than a metaphor, Crossland says. She says it's an orientation and a technique to enhance the strategic renewal of an organisation. So she goes further and suggests that it's actually what we need to renew organisations completely. Um, now this is quite interesting because um, there was a very famous painting in the Royal Academy of Arts in 1926 and it shows a jazz musician sort of sitting on a crumbling Greek structure. Uh, and it sort of represents the jazz musician breaking under the weight of the, um, of the new world order coming through. Um, and it's very interesting because it, it's all very analogous to what we've just been saying, that there are some new models of organisation, new ideas coming through that are superseding the old ones. And this is quite a nice illustration of that visually. Okay, so um, there's a lot of literature out there about the jazz metaphor. Uh, I've just selected some of them. Most of them are centred around organisational studies and leadership. And, um, and here's, here's quite a few. And new product development as well, developing new products. That's quite a big one. Um, but they still lack some hard data from this research. And um, that's what we're lacking, and that's what we need, to, we need to start getting. So here's some hard facts. This was the UK Innovation Survey, 2014. It's a very, very recent, and it refers in there to um, policies that attempt to increase sales directly will, may be ineffective uh, unless you've got this uh, people in technology who are um, innovative and have an innovative capacity. So it's very, very clear in that policy document what's needed to uh, increase sales directly. Here's another quote from the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, um, and that clearly refers to softer or intangible skills, such as entrepreneurial ability, communication skills, and adaptability, um, all being very, very key to um, facilitate innovation. Um, and there's a lack of this, and this has been noted by the OECD in one of their papers. So these are real concerns and real problems which lead real solutions. So part of the possible solution is what MIT have been saying, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, saying that improvisation may be the key to managing some of this change. And they, uh, their leadership centre has stressed the importance of organisational flexibility um, in <coughs> taking advantage of new technologies, etc. And also, um, IBM did a massive um, collaborative exercise where they had 150,000 participants from 104 countries. And the whole point of this was to try and get new ideas to go to market with. And they actually um, invested up to 100 million in uh, marketing these ideas from that single event. So the idea of jamming, which is obviously a very jazz idea of band jamming, 
was taken and applied. Okay, so what are my workshops about? They're about uh, young people actually using these ideas. So not waiting till you're jaded and uh, have lots of industry baggage like me, but actually getting young people to be open to these ideas. It's a pilot project, never been done before, three workshops over three weeks. Um, and there's a link on the Brent Council website who've kindly funded this bit of uh, pilot work. Um, so really it's about getting young people to think as improvisers. So we want to create the next generation of young business improvisers. I'm, I'm skipping through this because I've got five minutes uh, to go. So um, just going back to these ideas about improvisation, a, a very famous jazz musician called Lee Connitz made this uh, model of improvisation. He said it starts with interpretation, which is really a small, a small type of improvisation, not full-scale improvisation, all the way through to improvisation at the bottom, which is full-scale improvisation. Um, so he's made this model here. And what we want to try and test on in our research and in this workshops is if we can get the young people to do the bottom bit, the full-scale improvisation. Um, and again, this is another table here, and you can see Lee Connitz's stages right in the middle there. Um, and on the right-hand side, it says communication metaphor here. And what we're trying to do is get these young guys to communicate like this, to be spontaneous and have a mutually constructed conversation that um, facilitates a lot of creativity and innovation. So um, hopefully they'll be jumping off the cliff and um, going into this with an open mind and we'll be meeting the requirements of this higher scale, uh, full scale improvisation. And I've just described what that is there at the bottom. And that's it. Thanks for listening.